Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to undervolt the MSI GP66. Okay, so make sure your laptop's turned off. Then when you turn it on, press the power button and tap the delete key. Then you'll be put into the BIOS. Now what you want to do is press the control, right control, right shift, left alt and F2 together. So right control, shift, left alt and F2 and then tap F2. Then you'll be put into the advanced menu. Um, And now to undervolt, what you got to do is go to right to the advanced menu, go down until you see overclocking performance menu, press enter, then by default this feature will be disabled, so you can go ahead and enable that. Once you've enabled it, you can go down. to XTU interface, click enabled, then go on processor. <clears throat> so just so you know, before we go any further, um, the XTU interface, um, it doesn't really work because you need to have an older version of Intel XTU in order in order to be, to be able to mess with settings in Intel XTU. If you were to download the latest version of Intel XTU, even though you've got this enabled, it will still not work, at least in my experience. So what you want to do is um, manually undervolt it in the BIOS. And I found um, around 60 to 80, minus 60 to 80 millivolts is probably the best. So what we do is go to processor, press enter, go down to core voltage offset. And this is where you can input um, however much you want to undervolt it by. So I would start by doing small increments. But before you go any further, you have to change the offset prefix to the minus. Otherwise, it will apply an overvolt instead of an undervolt. So make sure it's on the minus. Then you can go ahead and um, go to the core voltage offset and just enter any number you like. So I'll put 80 in there. That's, I think, the most, it will be stable. So then you wanna to go to save changes and reset. Okay, and now I'm in. So now we can open up Intel XTU. And because I've just updated the Intel XTU to the latest version, it won't allow us to mess with any of these settings anymore. We can only adjust the power uh, TDP of the chip. But you can have a look. Uh, the undervolt has in fact been applied. minus 80 um, generally speaking it does it doesn't really affect temperatures much but it does affect how long this can stay boosted for so before I would notice it would boost to the max frequency and then it will throttle pretty it wasn't even that bad to be honest, but I just find that it can maintain four four point one gigahertz a lot more, whereas before it'd be down to like three point eight three point nine gigahertz. But yeah, it's, it is pretty decent to be fair. You can see it is still boosting pretty high on the in terms of the package TDP, and it does actually get pretty hot until the fans kick in. So, but that's a pretty good score. That's pretty 
pretty much what I'll be getting. In games, it'll be most beneficial because when you do decide to lock the TZP to like you know 35 watts, 45 watts in games, it will actually run at a higher clock, which is actually you know more beneficial. It'll run cooler as well during games. But yeah, that's that. Thank you for watching.